Today's webinar, we're going to cover the ASP.NET docking suite. It's called ASPX docking, and it's comprised of a few simple parts. But let me first cover some of the benefits that you get with a docking suite. You can create custom web page layouts and give it a nice, uh, smooth drag and drop feel to it, uh, kind of like widgets that you might have seen on yahoo.com or something like that. And we, as usual with our HP.NET controls, we've added a lot of things like client side API, beautiful theme support, as well as callback support built right into it. Now, I mentioned it is fairly easy to create. And today, what I'm going to show you is how to create uh, a basic layout, but sort of with a twist. Because one of the key benefits with the DevExpress ASP.NET docking suite is that because our parts are all not sort of independent, but they can be placed on different physical pages in your website meaning that you can have them in a user control or even on the master page. And you can simply tell how, you can define and let them know to say that one pan, one of the widgets belongs to one of the different panels or zones and so forth. So today we'll cover all that. And uh, if you're not aware, I blogged about this uh, back in, I think it was May or something like that. Uh, I'll put a link to this uh, article here. I'll just put this in the chat window. It's got some useful info. It's got a beginning intro that covers some of the demos. And if you want to see a live working demo of this, you can always go to demos.devexpress.com and click on the ASP Experience Suite. And this is our suite that includes all of our navigation and layout type controls like menu and so forth. And under docking, you'll see all the different demos we've added. So I'll just quickly cover some of these, its features. It, it has support for what we call widgets. Now, widgets, really, they're just user controls, which, which is great because you can define anything you want in there, whether it's a little timer that counts down or a label that has date and time in it or a calendar or something more uh, uh, compelling like this headlines control or even show some stocks or even the weather. And the docking by default gives you the capability to define zones where you can easily drag and drop these widgets into. So once you define them, you automatically get the functionality to let your end users play around and rearrange this as they wish. And we can also display when those items are enabled and disabled. So for example, when I close this panel, you can see this icon automatically lights up for the mail, as well as date time, calendar, and so forth. And as I add and remove items, you can see that they automatically get resized or moved up and down. So there's also a great feature that we've added in this that allows you to define where the panels can be placed. Now today I'm going to show you how to do the basics of the widgets uh, as well as creating a, a widget into that demo we we're just looking at. Uh, probably what we won't have time to cover is uh, this Forbidden Zones feature, but it is really simple, and, and I'll show you that inside. But the Forbidden Zones feature simply allows you to say where a panel can be docked, and it's very useful in the sense that if you don't want your end users, let's say you had a very long uh, column, I'm sorry, very long panels that had some information that you didn't want placed into a smaller area, because these panels, as you see here, so we have three zones. We have the long one here, then we have the, these, this one is vertical, and this one is also vertical, and this one is horizontal. So let's say you didn't want them to put something in the horizontal area. Well, we can easily, uh, oops, let me make sure, GoToMeeting is telling me that our uh, audio might be a little slow, so if you experience any issues, just let uh, us know via the chat or the questions. Now. Here, uh, as I mentioned, if you don't want your end users to put the panel somewhere, you can easily say where the panel can be docked into which zone. So, um, and, and, as, and if I didn't mention clearly enough, in essence, the docking has three major components. We have these panels that can contain widgets and so forth, as well as the zones. And these are the zones where the panels can be docked. And there's also a non-visual control called the dock manager. And what we saw here, the 
this is not necessarily a doc manager. This is simply a, um, let's just show you real quick. This is simply uh, a little panel that we're using to show some icons, but the actual client side code that is handled by that is actually inside of, uh, that comes from our SPX docking uh, doc manager. So, for example, this is simply a repeater that has some icons to represent the different widgets. Now, what we're doing is simply saying that when it's closed, then we set, we're going to set the visibility to false, and when it's uh, opened again, when you click on that icon again, we'll reshow that panel. And I'll show you how to do this in, uh, in this webinar today. So let's get started. So we'll start with a simple website. Open up Visual Studio. And I'll say file new website. I'm not really particular about the name, so I'm just going to start with actually an empty website. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to add a new item. And the first new item I'm going to add is a master page. Now, I, I promised to show you that one of its key benefits that you have is uh, these are very easy to configure and set up, and you can place them on different physical pages. Uh, with other suites, you get kind of a limitation where there's a central control where they all have to be placed into it. That's very limiting. So as you'll see right now that you can place them anywhere. So we'll start with the master page here. I'll just leave it called master page. We'll go to the design view. And from the design view, I'm going to add the first control, which will be a doc panel. Now you can find this in the navigation and layout category. And we'll double click on the ASPX doc panel. Now you'll see the web config opens up and uh, different references are added as well as uh, the app license DL if you have a registered version. This is basically because in the design view we're doing some checks and it, it, it makes it easier so that all your references are automatically added for you in the web config and so forth. Now, the first thing we want to do So the first thing I want to do is set the panel UID to master page panel. Now this panel UID is very useful. This ID allows us to reference between the panels and the zones and so forth. So I'm simply going to call this the master page panel. The, the next thing I want to do though is also define when this is displayed visually. So right now we just set the ID, but we actually haven't set the text. So let's set the header text. I'm going to go to the properties, click on header, and when you first go to properties, you're going to see there's a ton of properties available for you. Now, we've been doing controls for a while, so we're very used to uh, what are some of the important features and so forth, so you'll see all sorts of great properties in here that allow you to customize the heck out of the SPX doc controls, including things like appearance, behavior, whether you want to allow dragging and resizing. Uh, whether animations are there or hot tracking. So there's some things we've enabled by default and some things we've enabled, not enabled by default, but you can easily go and change them via this properties panel. Now, what I want to do is I want to set the header text, and you'll find that under miscellaneous, and right now it's just called header text. So we're going to call this the master page panel. Now, let's go look at the source view. So here we see our doc panel. And we set up the panel UID as well as the header text. Now we're going to add one more item. Now, if you're not familiar, in the the way master pages work is this will be the master pages, which is our template, and they give us a couple of content placeholders. So the pages that derive from the master page will place those items in the content placeholder. So Right now, I don't want to place anything in the content placeholder because I'm simply just defining the master page. Now here, I can uh, add it. I want to add a little table, and I'm going to use that table to display a couple of zones where the panels can be docked. So I, I could add the table through the design view, but I'm simply going to just use a little 
source coding here, and I'll call this table. And Visual Studio uh, is helpful here to help me complete this. And now I'll call this table row. And in the row, I want to define a couple of columns. Now, we're going to add a doc zone. So we can do this either through the design view or through the source view. And I'll simply just do it through the doc zone. I'm sorry, through the design view. So now, in the left side of my page here, I have a zone. Now, this is, I can, currently, now I can go to this panel and define and say, this panel should go into this zone automatically. But if I don't define it, what it'll do is it'll be a free folding panel, meaning that it won't be actually docked anywhere. Now, we saw this in that earlier demo. If we take a quick look at this. If we, let's see. Let me refresh this because in, so as we see here, the date and time right now is currently just free floating because we haven't told it by default where to be docked. But we can easily go and say, I want it to be docked here. So for now, I will uh, define this master page panel and set its zone ID. So here we have the owner zone ID and I want to set that to the master page zone. Now I, ha I haven't defined its name yet but let's first set up its name here. So right now the zone I UID is simply set to a default name like ASP.doc so I'm gonna let's give it something more meaningful like master page zone. And here I can also pick a, a orientation. I can pick horizontal or vertical. But now I will leave it vertical because I have two side by side in this table. If perhaps I did a, a row based one, I might do vertical, but it's completely up to you. You can have a combination of uh, either any of those uh, combinations. So now here we have the master page zone. I'll save that. And now I'm going to set this master page panel. Actually, I want to set a little uh, notification because Right now, the zone simply appears there. So I'm going to call this the master page zone so that we know which is the master page zone. And I'm not going to add anything in here yet. So in our master page, all we've done is simply define this panel and the zone. Now, you're going to see that. I'll close this, simply compile it, make sure it's working OK. And now, what I'm going to do is add another item. And as I said, you're free to add it into almost any of those ASP.NET uh, pages. So I'm going to add a new item, and it'll be a new web user control. Uh, where the heck did it go? I can never find this uh, user control. Excuse me one second while I try to figure this out. Name ascending. There it is, web user control. And I'll call it web user control with zone because I intend to put a zone on there. So I'll click add. Now, this user controls. User controls are handy because they allow us to put, uh, separate out. Uh, visual parts of our layout. So we can sort of encapsulate one little item into the user control. And what we're going to do in, in this user control is add a new zone. So here I'll go to the design view, I'll go back to the navigation, and I'll add a new zone. And here we're going to give this a better name. And I'll call this user control zone. And I'll leave the layout to vertical. I'm going to save that, close it. Let's go back to our master page. Now, what I intend to do is reference that zone. Now, as you can see, I have a table here, and we already have the master page zone. But what I can do now is reference the zone from the user control by placing the user control 
inside of my other column of the table. So let's do that. The first thing we want to do is get a reference on our master page to the user control. So the first thing we have to do is add a register tag. Now, I think I can do this by simply doing this. Um, okay, maybe not. So what I could simply say percent and register and point to the source property and say web user control and then we need to give it a tag prefix and I'll call it my user control my UC and give it a tag name that we can reference to in here and I'll simply call it zone now we can reference that the same way this is being referenced as DX because this page knows that DX comes from this assemblies from debit source for assemblies and here's the prefix so now I can go here in the same way and add the user control so the first thing I want to do is give it a name the same way I have in the other one call this user control zone and now we'll add zone, I'm sorry, my, the prefix, user control, colon zone, and then simply say run at is equal to server. Now we have all the pieces we need. So if we take a look at this, I'm going to save this, go to the design view, and the master page now renders the default controls on this page as well as the user control that contains the zone that's completely in a different physical file. So now I want to set up this doc panel. So the first thing I want to do is give it um, let me just quickly check something here. Ah, okay, so now I want to set up this doc panel here. And I want to define this one. I can easily define it to go here. Or what I want to do is I want to have it defined so that its owner is actually this user control. So let's do this. I can do this easily via this thing, but because this is the default page in the design view, it can't actually while it renders this, it doesn't actually see this. Now, this is simply uh, sort of a limitation from Visual Studio itself, right? Because we're not actually running thing. But we can easily do this to the source. So here, I'll go into the source, and I can type in owner zone UID is equal to, and if we go back to our user control, we'll grab this zone, user control zone, the zone ID, UID, and we can paste it in here. So now this doc panel on the master page is actually going to be docked in the zone that's in the user control. So as you can see, this gives you great flexibility to define zones and panels in different pages. Now I'm going to save this, do a quick compile, make sure everything's working okay. Now as you can see, we've defined a master page and the zone, but we still don't have a default page, something to display from. So uh, before I do that, I'm going to add a couple more items. Let's go back to the design view here. And what I want to do is add a couple more panels. So I'll go back to the toolbox here. And I'll add a new doc panel. And I'm going to call it this free master page panel. Copy this. Also set the property for this. Now I call it free because I'm not going to actually have it docked anywhere as I showed in the uh, the demo. So let's set the header text to oops, user control zone. Oops, not user control zone. This is the free master page panel. All right, 
and then, then I will also set change this now because this is um, free master page panel meaning it doesn't have any owner set that it's not being docked any zone that is being docked to but this one does let's rename this from master page panel to something else let's call this a little, be a little more specific we'll call it the docked master page panel so we know the difference between which one is docked and which is not now let's save everything do a quick compile and now we're going to add another item so let's go to our solution explorer i'm going to add a new item and now we can go ahead and add our default aspx page oops i do want to specify one thing about the default aspx page so let's re-add this delete this now I could do it from code, but I want to show you that it's just easier to do it through the UI. So we'll go back and I'll, I'll add a new item in from the master page. And I want to say select master page because I want this web form to be uh, derived from the master page that we've already got defined. And here it shows us all the available master pages. And since there's only one, I'm only going to select the default one, double click on it. And now, as we can see, this default page derives from our master page and gives us a couple of uh, areas where we can add these. So now go to the design view. Now the first thing you'll notice is because it derives from our master page, not only does it show the zones from the master page, the zones and the panels, but also the user control zone as well. And uh, that's really handy because it gives us a great visual layout for how our page is going to look and who can completely control this look. So now we have, a, we have the content placeholder in the body area that allows us to add new items. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new doc panel here. I'll double click. And now I have a doc panel. I must set its panel UID to doc page panel. Simply it's a doc page panel and I also want to set the header text to the same. Doc page panel. Forgot the ED dot. Okay. So now we're going to dock this page panel uh, to one of the other docs, um, to one of the other zones in the other pages. But first, I want to add one more item here. Add another one. And because the first one is being docked or will be docked, what I want to do is I want to call this free page panel and set its header text to the same page panel. Now, this one, I'm going to dock to this zone in the master page. So let's go and grab that ID. Open up the master page. And here's the zone, and here's the zone UID. I'll simply copy this. Go back to our default page. And now, as I mentioned before, from the design view, you may not see it, but we can easily do it through the source. So I can go back here, and this is the doc page panel, and set its owner. I'll do control space to have it complete with the IntelliSense. Type in master page zone. I'm sorry, paste in master page zone. And now it, it will be, by default, when it renders, displayed there. Now, I think we have all of the pieces ready. So what we can do is simply do a quick compile and execute. So let's, I'm going to run without the debugging because I find it's a little bit faster sometimes. So I'll hit Control F5 and it should render the default page. So now what we see here is we have the free page panel and the free master page panel that weren't docked anything and the docked page panel which is being docked into the master page zone and the docked master page panel which is being docked into the user control so what i can do is this 
maybe it's a little bit confusing. So let's let's reference it by name. So the docked page panel exists on our default ASPX page. The master page zone exists on the master page. The master page panel exists on the master page. And what's really great about all of this is that it gives you that flexibility to put them in many places and they all work seamlessly with each other. So now I can take this free page panel, put it into the zone that exists in the user control, or I can take this free master page panel and put it here. So as you can see, your end users have that flexibility to add them and move them around. So to quickly recap, we've added basically a master page with two zones on it. I'm sorry, one zone and one user control that contains a zone as well as two panels, one of them docked, one of them free, and the web user control simply has one zone in it. Now, I'm sorry, and finally we had the master page panel which simply has a docked panel and a non-docked panel, one that is free that, that doesn't have a zone specified where it uh, lands into. Now, this, all of these panels and zones give you a lot of flexibility. If you look through the um, smart tag of the item in the design view or even in the properties, the properties there's a lot more access to, you can do things by taking a look at some of those other features like forbidden zones. Here we can define which is the forbidden zone. So I can say this should never be docked into a particular zone. So for example, let's say, uh, let's go back into the master page. And here I can say this free master page panel, I don't want it to be docked inside of the master page zone. Now, I'll save this, I'll rebuild it, I'll run it. Now, the free page panel can go in here, but the free master page panel cannot be docked in here because we've defined that restriction. So it's a great way for you to define where panels can be docked and where they should be docked and so forth. Now, I probably won't cover uh, uh, sort of the look and feel, but it's very easy to set up themes of our controls. Now, uh, if you want, take a look at uh, the, all the available themes for the dockings and all of them are supported across all of the browsers. So, take a look at the code here. You can define them either through uh, through the, um, let's put this go here. Now you can define them uh, through a, a number of ways. What I usually like to do is do it for all of the controls. Now the best way is to just go into the web config and define an area that says here the, I believe it's system web pages theme and define a particular theme that you want here. So let's say we wanted red wine or something like this, right? Now, that simply defines what I want the theme to be, but it's still letting me know that this theme doesn't actually exist. So what I can do is I can go to components, tools, the ASPX theme deployer. Now you can find this in our start program files. I click run. Now the, I'll point this to this current website, which is under Documents, Visual Studio 2010, Websites, this is Website 2, click OK. Now, I don't want all, so I'll simply remove all, and I'll select, let's say, something like Office 2010 Blue and Red Wine. And this is only the ASP Experience Control, so I'll only copy those items. And then I can hit Copy Files, which will copy in the skin files. And if I want it, I can uh, do uh, other files as well. Now I'll click Refresh here, and we can see we now have an App Themes folder. So now I can rebuild this, and let's see if it applies our theme. Now, as you can see, it's really easy to add the theme support as well to the master pages, and you get these beautiful looking images as well as some gradients and so forth. So um, I highly recommend playing uh, recommend playing around with them. Now, 
uh, I can pause if there's any questions, Amanda. If not, what I'll do is continue. Uh, no questions yet, Mahul. Excellent. So you saw how you can set up a, a basic layout. We saw how we can uh, add a theme to it. You, you're probably wondering now, well, what about the actual widgets? Uh, well, as I mentioned, the widgets are just those items within there. So if we take a quick look again at our one of our panels and one of uh, these items, you can see what we've done is we've exposed, let's go back to the master page, and let's look at this guy. We've exposed uh, a lot of templates in here, right? So you can take a look at the header template or the footer template, but really these items can be, oops, let me end template editing here. These items, you can simply start and start dropping items within here. So you can say something like, this is great, or um, the docked master page panel. And you can even add controls within there, whether you want to add an image, or you want to add a grid or something. It's very flexible. Because if we take a look here, we can see that those those are simply areas that allow us to uh, add just about anything we want in there. So I'll save this. Let's take a quick look at this again. As you can see, it easily adds any of those uh, content areas. And what's great is we can even define uh, the ability to have something load within there. So for example, go to the properties and let's take a look at the free master page panel and I'm going to resize it just a little bit here. Let's say something like so. Let's remove the text here. Uh, one of the options that you also have is the ability to do a content URL. So it can load items from uh, one of the other uh, pages. So let's say we had an HTML page and I believe we can even do an external one. Uh, let me check if this works. Let's take a quick look at this. Yes, so as you can see, right now went out to the net and even loaded up our content URL for the devexpress.com site, which I defined. So you now you may be asking, like, how do we actually do this and even add something like this little widget thing? So let's let's take a look at this demo. Uh, what we try to do with all of our demos is give them to you so that you can play around with them. Um, so even if you're interested in, let's say, this particular uh, demo, I, I can always expose it for you uh, on a blog post or something, or maybe turn it into something like our simply the content URL, or or put it on our, on our Code Central site. So. Let's open up that demo that we're just looking at online. And to find it, we'll, we'll go to Open Project, File Open Project, and I'll go to, um, in, in Visual Studio, I'm sorry, with the newer releases, I think we started this in 2010 Volume 2, we, we changed the location where our items are added. And for uh, we now started adding them to the public, the, the user's public documents folder. Now you can usually find that by going to your local drive, C colon, users, uh, and instead of your username, we put them in public. And I forget the exact reason, I'm sure um, one of our devs can tell you, but I think uh, we had a particular reason why we had to do this. I think it had to do something with Visual Studio 2010. So if you go to your user's public folder, at least in Windows 7, you'll f under there you'll go to public documents, and there you'll find our demo. So I've got 2010.2 and 2011.1. And under there, I'll go to Components, ASP.NET, ASP Experience, and there's a VB version as well as a C-Sharp version. And I'll go into the C-Sharp, ASP Experience Demos. If you scroll all the way down, and if you double-click this, this will open up the uh, project. Now, the first thing you'll see is this conversion wizard. And this is because we support uh, different IDEs. We support also Visual Studio 2008 as well as 2010. And so we try to tar allow at least target for the lowest common denominator. But we can easily upgrade this to 4.0, ASP.NET 4.0, and I'll do that right now. So I'll click Next in the wizard. I'm not going to create a backup. Click Next, and I'll click Finish. 
and all it's doing right now is just converting uh, that project type to the new Visual Studio 2010 project type. Click close. And CodeRush is just doing a little solution item processing. Because this is a big project, I'm going to cancel that just for a second. Um, as you can see, these are feature demos. These are demos that are not necessarily to show you uh, what it looks like in an application. It's really more to show you the features and how you can implement them yourself. Uh, in the future, we are going to provide you some more demos that give you sort of that uh, visualization of how it might look in a one of your pages or maybe even a sample app. So uh, those things are coming in a future release and we're keen to uh, bring them out to you soon. Now, I'll go under docking, ASP Experience and docking. And here we can see all of the different pages. Now, if I double click on the widgets, this is the demo that we see online. So let's just take a quick look at it in design view. Now, because this is a big demo, it's going to take a little bit longer to render in design view. And also, it's deriving from a master page as well. So let's just give it a quick minute. Plus, I'm running everything in a virtual machine. Oh, while that loads up, I do want to show you there is a, another um, project. OK, so that's done loading. Now here, this is simply the master page for this demo. So let's scroll down into the content area and see what we have on this page. Now, um, you may see this as well. When, don't get too worried about this error rendering control. What's happening here is Visual Studio 2010 is having a little bit hard time trying to keep up with all, all of the items in the design view, which is why it's just having a little bit problem in rendering that control. But it actually renders just fine. And it, let me do a quick compilation so I can show you. Um, it actually displays them just fine as well. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to modify this demo and add a new widget that can be docked on here, as well as adding it to that ASP repeater that shows a bunch of little icons when something is closed or opened. So as you can see, this features demo has quite a bit of things into it, and it's almost done compiling. So while that's... Uh, running let's do this we will start by adding let's start, let's first start by taking a look at where these widgets actually exist and what they are so as you can see we have panels here and within the panels we have some items so let's take a look at what's actually in those panels and here we can see that we have this something called a widget now this isn't a new type or anything like that this is simply a user control as we saw in the previous demo this is simply a web user control that's been embedded into the content uh, area of this panel. And what I'm going to do is define a new one. Now, if you want to take a look at these uh, user controls, you'll find them under the widgets folder. So let's take a look at this one, the date and time one. And as you can see, it's simply an ACX file. And in here, it's simply a timer as well as a label to show off uh, the countdown for the timer as well as the date and time, the current date and time. So we'll do something similar. I'm going to right click here and I'm going to add a new item. And let's call this, where is the web user control? Right here. Uh, let's just call this hello widget. Now, in here, I can do almost anything. I can add uh, an image. I can add something particular. All I'm going to do is simply say uh, hello. And I'll save this and I'll close this. Now I want to add a new doc panel to this page. So what I'll do is I'll go back to the toolbox and I'll add a new doc panel. And as we did before, we want to define its header text. Let's first define its user ID, and I'll call this the 
hello panel and it doesn't actually have a zone so I'll leave it free floating for now and let's go back here and set its header text as well hello panel I'll call it hello world how's that and now in this content area I can add the user control so what I'll do is I want to make sure first we have a reference to it. So as you can see, we have to add that register tag as before. So uh, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'll copy an existing one because a lot of the items are same for it. And I'll simply change the necessary item. So this is called, it won't be called news, it'll be called hello widget. And I'll call its tag name hello. Now, let's go down to our hello widget there it is and uh, let's go into the content area now I can I can add the content area in a similar way that this is done by just copying this and doing this or I can go into the design view put a, a character so that it creates this little piece of code as well so um, I'll simply do it this way just to show you so uh, I don't want this widget. What I do want is the one that I created. So I'll call this widget hello. Set its run at variable equal to server. And uh, I should probably give it an ID as well. So um, something like hello widget one. Okay, now we have all the necessary pieces, and I can go back to the hello world, and you can see it actually renders the user control for us because it's not very complicated. Uh, perhaps some of the more complicated ones Visual Studio may have a problem with, but for the simpler ones, it has uh, no problems with playing those. So let's save this, I'll rebuild it, and let's show this. Now, while that loads up, I do want to uh, I do want to say that DevExpress has uh, a lot of developers, and uh, I work with the ASP.NET team, and they are a fantastic bunch of guys. Um, they help me create these awesome demos, so I, I really want to say thanks because some of them are here in the webinar. So here we can see here's our new item that we just created, the new doc panel that we created with the user control that we also set. And we have the ability to dock it anywhere. So right now, the other items not being shown, but we can show them easily and start adding them to the page as well. So I'll simply add this here. And maybe I'll put the Hello World back up here. Now, one thing is, when I get rid of Hello World, uh, for example, when I get rid of mail, I can see this icon light up. When I get rid of the trading, this icon lights up. But if I get rid of the whole world, there's no icon for it to light up on. So let's correct that. So I'll close this. And if we take a look, if we scroll down on this demo, you can see this is simply a little repeater that has a bunch of icons in it. And what I'll do is I'll go back in this uh, item here and add that uh, in there. So. Let me see where that is defined. I believe it's defined up here, the number of widgets. So there's a collection that this thing reads from, and that looks like it's getting that from cursor pointer. Ah, okay, I'm sorry. So this is actually being pulled in from the uh, server side. So if we take a look at the widgets ASPX code behind, here we can see that we defined a string array of the actual widgets. So here's everything from date, time, mail, news, trading, weather, calendar. And now we'll add our new one called hello. I'll save this and automatically, now that we've defined that into the string array, it will show that into the repeater. 
the one thing that it won't show is an actual image because we don't have an image defined for this widget. So if we take a look at images widgets, we can see we have images for everything. So I'm just going to uh, create a copy here and I'll rename this hello. So now we'll have two items that look like uh, hello, but uh, it should be fine. So now let's execute this and go back to docking widgets. Now, as you can see, we have two items because I copied the calendar demo, but now when I close hello world, I have the ability to, oops, I should have the ability to display, but I didn't reference it properly, so let's do that. I believe I need to give this a lowercase h. As well as, uh, let's go back here, yes. Let's take a look at this in action again. Ah. All right. For some reason, I can't get that uh, reference properly, but let me see if I can figure it out. So, in the meantime, Amanda, if there's any questions, I'll, I'll be happy to answer them now. Um, I'm just going to take a look around. For some reason, I can't. Uh, let's see, I've got hello there. You know what, let's do this. Let's just get rid of the image to show you that even if we don't have an image, the repeater will still show it because it's in the string array. Ah, so here, as you can see, the hello is not displayed there, but it should be... Uh, it, once you define the image, it should be there, just as it is for calendars and the others. Oops, let's put this guy here. Okay, so go ahead. Oh, sorry, I was just w waiting. There aren't any questions, but if uh, you everyone does have questions, you should get them in now as we're nearing the end of the webinar. Yes, yes, you should. <laughs> Okay, so let's. Uh, okay, so the get client button click handler. Ah, okay, so I think there was something I did not define on the widget. Training widget, calendar widget, is widget. Ah, okay, so I believe I did not have the right ID for it. So let's make sure I do. Let's call this hello widget. Ah. All right, so I'll, I'll figure out why this doesn't work and I'll put that into the uh, post afterwards. I don't want to Hold uh, everybody up here, but uh, in in def uh, okay. Hold on one second. I think I'm missing. This is a client side feature, so probably yeah. Okay, so here's the here's the thing. This client instance name defines on the client side how to reference that object. Now, if you can see, we have it for almost all of our panels, but the one that I didn't define it on is this panel. So I'll simply add a client instance name and we'll call it hello panel. So now I believe that's all we need to do so that now that item can be referenced when we close that panel. So now when I click hello and I click this it should be there. So let's see. Recreate that image.
So uh, with that, I want to thank everybody for uh, attending. Um, I had a lot of fun with these things, and uh, let's see if we can't uh, display this guy. Okay, so uh, for some reason uh, this won't show up, but we'll figure it out. I'll, I'll post it in the uh, follow blog post with this. Um, if you have any questions, if you want me to share that uh, first demo's code, uh, it's actually pretty straightforward. But if anybody wants to see that code, just let me know, and I'll post that somewhere, either on the blog or maybe on our uh, Code Central site or something like that. Um, with that, Amanda, I'll give it back to you. Awesome. Uh, thank you, Mahul. Okay, so we do have a question just popped up from Christy. Can this also be applied to XAF views slash dashboard elements? You know, the XAF team is, I believe, going to look into this capability. See, XAF has, uh, XAF's power is being able to build the UIs. And, you know, adding this feature, I agree, Christy, it would be fantastic to add, but I don't think it's uh, necessarily a simple task in the sense that, you know, how do you add the zones? You know, you have to look at the, the data model and then decide this should be a zone or this should be uh, so and so. so I believe they're definitely looking into it because I know it's a very popular request. A lot of people, in fact, when I first announced this, I think that was one of the first questions that somebody says, hey, is this going to be an XAF? And uh, as you can see, the team lead, Dennis, says, you know, we definitely want to look into this. Um, and, you know, I mean, in fact, we're e even thinking to try to bring this for the MVC framework. Uh, it, currently, it's not in this release, but perhaps in a future release, we can get it for MVC as well. So I would say that uh, let the XAF team know that this is something you're, you're wanting in XAF, and they'll do their best to try to integrate it in a future release. Uh, great. Uh, that is the, or was the only question. So. Awesome. Um, so if you're not following our, our Facebook page, please follow it. It's devexpress.com, Facebook. Oops. Ads. <laughs> I'm sorry, go on, Amanda. I am done. Uh, yeah, oops. So, uh, yes, uh, I tried to do some productivity hacks, and one of the productivity hacks I can mention for sure is block Facebook. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. What is it? Facebook.com ah, slash yes. DevExpress? Facebook.com slash DevExpress, and you can find me at mehulh at DevExpress.com. And follow the blog at dexpress.com slash Mihul. Awesome. Uh, thanks, Mihul. Also, all right, so we have a whole lineup of webinars posted uh, for the rest of June and throughout July. You can check them out and register at devexpress.com slash webinars. Coming up this week, today at noon, Pacific Standard Time, Advanced Code Rush Plugins, Creating Custom Code Issues with Mark Miller and Rory Becker. They show how to create custom code issues that reveal potential problem areas in code that might need a developer's attention. And tomorrow at 10 a.m., 11.1 .1 reporting preview, new WPF features with reporting evangelist Seth Juarez. This webinar will explore several new reporting features added to WPF in our latest release. These additions include new shortcuts, events, and preview features that will enrich your already powerful WPF reporting toolset. Thursday, 10 a.m., building a scrolling tile engine with XNA on Windows Phone with XNA MVP Chris G. Williams. This is the fourth installment in a seven-part series on Windows Phone 7. This webinar shows basic techniques for creating games that use a scrolling tiled map. And then finally, Friday, working with the state machine module with XAF evangelist Apostolos Bekiaris. In this session, we'll demonstrate how to take advantage of the module in our project management application. Again, if you missed anything from this webinar or you want to review any previous webinars, visit us on the DevExpress channel at tv.devexpress.com. Again, thanks to Mahul. Thank you to the team, too, for being here. Thank you all for joining us, and thanks for choosing DevExpress. <laughs>